I'll tell you what, today's show is a heater, but first make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting that red subscribe button down below because during this offseason, we have you covered with all things Niners. The NFL Combine kicks off tomorrow. In two weeks, NFL free agency begins and the Niners have a lot of big decisions to make. At the end of April is the NFL draft. So join the faithful family here at Chat Sports by subscribing to the 49ers report. Either hit that red button down below or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. And with that, let's Hop into the latest 49ers news and rumors. Welcome in to the 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Hope all of the faithful is off to a fantastic week. You know, it's a fantastic app, the Fetch Rewards app. Do you like free gift cards? You can be well on your way to earning free gift cards if you download the Fetch Rewards app by going to chatsports.com slash fetch. And when you enter the promo code 49ers, you get 3,000 bonus points upon scanning your first receipt. It's free, easy to use, and anybody can download it by using that link down below. We'll tell you more about the Fetch Rewards app coming up here in just a few moments. Start off today's show with the latest going on around Trey Lance, and we're actually going to talk positively about Trey Lance, and he hasn't had a lot of positive talk throughout this offseason because people are talking about bringing in Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, including us here on the channel. Some are saying that Trey Lance is not ready to play. I've always been high on the prospect. You go back to my last mock draft prior to the 2021 NFL draft, I had Trey Lance slotted at number three going to San Francisco because I believe he has so much much potential. So too does Greg Cosell as well as Daniel Jeremiah. Cosell said this the other day and really spoke glowingly of Lance and how he can bring this 49ers offense to the next level. It's almost like Cosell and Daniel Jeremiah have been watching the 49ers report, just echoing everything that I've been sharing here on the channel. Cosell, one of the most respected film watchers across NFL circles said this, I think it's just a classic case of Garoppolo was an executor and Lance just gives you more in the offense. And I think you will see those elements in Kyle Shanahan's offense. And I think that will be a game by game deal. Lance is not quite as big as Josh Allen, but Lance is a big guy. And I think that's kind of lost a little bit. Obviously, no one wants their quarterback running a lot, but Lance is not a small man. He's not a wispy guy. So I think they'll feel that they can be part of what they do is Lance just displaying his insane level of athleticism and the fact that he can make any throw on the football field. And I've talked about this before. Trey Lance is not Josh Allen. He has similar qualities to Josh Allen from an athletic standpoint, arm strength, his ability to run the football, and his stature. And when I continue to break down and evaluate Trey Lance, this is really what I see. Has elite arm strength. He can make and complete any throw on the field, which Garoppolo cannot because really he primarily throws in between the hashes. You can put Trey Lance under center in the shotgun. He can run play action as an RPO or under center as a quarterback. Last year's draft class, he had the most under center snaps among all quarterback prospects. He offers a valuable running threat, which nowadays in the NFL I think is extremely valuable. And yes, Trey Lance is raw. He was drafted at 20 years old. He played one full season of collegiate football at the FCS level, only played one game in 2020 because of a COVID shortened season at North Dakota State. He has so much potential though, and he's only gonna be able to tap into it if he gets reps. And if you don't go the route of bringing in Tom Brady, I think you give the reins to Trey Lance and you're maximizing him and his abilities by giving him every single rep this offseason in order to work out the kinks with his mechanics. I was listening to Quincy Avery on the Ryan Rosillo podcast yesterday, and he talked about an underrated attribute for a quarterback just being a cool and relatable dude. He said Trey Lance is one of the coolest cats out there, and that's what made Jimmy Garoppolo so popular in this locker room, and I think things like that also matter when you're talking about the face of your franchise. And we've seen Trey Lance be so cool, calm, and collected. And then on the football field, we've seen massive improvements from his first start against Arizona to his second start against the Houston Texans. As for what Daniel Jeremiah of NFL Network had to say when he was discussing Trey Lance, in my opinion, yes, he's more talented than any quarterback in this draft class coming out, and I don't think it's particularly close. If he had a chance to go back 
back to school and continued to grow and play and develop, yeah, I think he would have been the first pick in this draft. Daniel Jeremiah, tell me that you're looking at my Twitter feed without looking at my Twitter feed. I said this on the 17th of February. If Trey Lance stayed at North Dakota State another year and was draft eligible this year, he'd be the number one quarterback prospect and it wouldn't be close. And what's crazy, Lance is 21 years old, so too is Sam Howe, and then you stack up the rest of the quarterbacks in this 2022 NFL draft class, Trey Lance even going into year two in the NFL is younger than every other quarterback in this draft class pretty much. Pretty crazy. And that's why the Niners are high on him. That's why I'm high on his potential. He just needs offseason reps to work out some of the flaws in his game. Your level of confidence in Trey Lance, if Kyle Shanahan names him the starter in 2022, is what? Type H for high. Type L for low. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, perfect opportunity to scroll on down and get your votes in. By the time you do that, we'll continue to talk Niners. From a young quarterback in Trey Lance to the best quarterback of all time who has seven Super Bowl championships, the Tom Brady to San Francisco buzz continues. Grew up in Northern California, grew up rooting on San Francisco. Joe Montana was the quarterback who he idolized growing up. And if you go back and read what Tom Brady said in his retirement post, he never used the word retire, retiring, or retirement. And right now, given his ties to the Niners, the fact that he wanted to go there prior to signing with the Bucks a couple years ago, 49ers are 2-1 to one odds to land Tom Brady. This is a storyline, folks, that we've been talking about before anybody else, and we're going to continue to talk about it right here on the Niners Report. Matt Mayoko, NBC Sports Bay Area, said this the other day. If Brady decides he wants to play and come out of retirement, there is only one destination for him. The 49ers check all the boxes. The team had a strong nucleus on both sides of the ball and a more direct path to a Super Bowl championship. He later said this. Two things can be true. The 49ers can want a short-term relationship with Brady while not second-guessing their commitment to a long-term union with Trey Lance, who turns 22 years old in May. Now, if Trey Lance is ready to play, and I said this last year going into the year when he was battling it out with Jimmy Garoppolo in training camp, if Trey Lance is ready to play, then you play him. If Trey Lance is not ready to play, I think the acquisition of Tom Brady makes the most sense financially, roster fit, of any of the other quarterbacks on the open market. Aaron Rodgers would demand way too much in a trade. So too would Deshaun Watson. The Seahawks aren't trading away Russell Wilson. And if you either have to trade for Tom Brady, I don't think you have to give up that much. You don't have to pay him that much because Tampa Bay really does have to absorb a large financial number. And if Tom Brady gets outright released by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he becomes a free agent. And I think at this point, as he's approaching 44 years old, he takes a hometown discount to come to San Francisco to chase another championship, which would be his third with a different team and his eighth overall. So if Lance isn't ready to play, I think this quarterback move makes the most sense. Also, on top of everything that I just talked about, you only have Tom Brady for, let's say, a year or two, and then eventually you hand over the keys to Kyle Shanahan's offense to Trey Lance, who at that point will still be on his rookie contract. And if you want to extend him, you can at a pretty affordable price because he's not going to demand top dollar. Pick one starter to be the starting quarterback in the face of the Niners in 2022. Difficult question. I want to see where the Niner gang is at on this. TL for Trey Lance, TB for Tom Brady. Be sure to get your votes in, get that comment section popping, and let me know down below. Nowadays, we have so many apps on our phones. You take a look at your screen time. Many people are on their phones for many hours a day. The good thing about the Fetch Rewards app, you don't have to be on the app for a long time. It's easy to use, and it's one of those apps that's not at the back half of your phone with apps that you don't use. Why is that? Because you get free gift cards by simply scanning your receipts regardless of where you make a purchase. And right now, if you go to chatsports.com fetch and enter the promo code 49ers, you get 3,000 bonus points on the first receipt that you scan. The solution is simple, folks. Get rewarded for all of your shopping by downloading the Fetch Rewards app today. And by scanning your receipts, you get bonus points back for doing so so that you can get free gift cards to places like Amazon, Starbucks, Fanatics, Walmart. And the cool thing is, 
If you shop at a large retail store, you get bonus points back for the, for the receipt. If you go to a local mom and pop shop, if you like supporting local businesses, you get rewarded for scanning those receipts as well. I'm going to put that link in the comment section as well as the description of this video. Couple more stories to get to here on the 49ers report. Jimmy Garoppolo to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is actually something that I don't believe is going to happen because I don't think it makes sense. Jimmy Garoppolo is not a scheme fit for Bruce Arians in that offensive scheme. You know Bruce Arians saying, no risk it, no biscuit. He likes quarterbacks to throw the deep ball, take risks. Well, Jimmy Garoppolo is risk averse and he doesn't throw the deep ball. In fact, he doesn't really throw to the outer hashes. He throws in between the hashes. But Colin Cowherd made predictions as far as which quarterbacks are going to land where for the 2022 season. He said this about Jimmy G to Tampa. I think this is a smokescreen that Trey Lance is not ready to play because they want to get more for Jimmy Garoppolo in a trade. They think Trey Lance is going to be raw, but I think they're going to give him as many snaps as they can. OTAs, preseason camps, let it run. I mean, they gave up three first round picks. That's a lot of capital and a third round pick. But Garoppolo to Tampa Bay is not really a system fit. Bruce Arians prefers his quarterbacks to have stronger arms. He likes his quarterbacks to make throws outside of the numbers. And that's not really the strength or the forte for Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, when you look at the Buccaneers roster right now, I think the surrounding pieces would be good for Jimmy G, even though Look, they're losing on the offensive line because Ali Marpet decided to retire. They could lose their center as well in Ryan Jensen, which is another huge loss. But from a receiver standpoint, running backs, even though Leonard Fournette is set to be a free agent, there are some good complimentary pieces on that roster for Jimmy G to be successful, and he's not going to put the team on his back like a Mahomes or a Josh Allen. So from that standpoint, I can see where Cowherd is coming from. From a scheme fit, though, I don't think Bruce Arians is going to make this move. Now, as I mentioned off the top, here on the 49ers Report by Chat Sports, after I took over the channel in April, we've been humming. We've taken this channel to new historic heights, and we want to continue to do so. And the more subscribers we get, the more videos we're able to push out. Now, my boy Harrison Graham was on Chicago Bears Now last week, and he said, we have to catch the San Francisco 49ers. We're able to make some grounds of late. Eh, let's dust those fools and let's pull away from Chicago Bears. Now, they have almost 43,000 subs. We're getting closer and closer to 60,000, 56,306 members of the faithful so far. So if you want the best 49ers coverage on YouTube, hit that red subscribe button down below or in a separate browser, let this video roll and go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. I can guarantee you we're going to continue to kill the game. And like no other channel does it, we involve and engage with the audience in a really entertaining and informative way because that's just what we do here at Chat Sports. So one more time, make sure you subscribe to the San Francisco 49ers support. A fascinating offseason awaits for the Niners. Free agency, the NFL draft. Who are they going to retain? Which free agents are they going to let go? Which free agents are they going to bring in-house? No matter what happens with this football team, I can guarantee you that we have you covered right here on the San Francisco 49ers Report. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below to join the faithful family here at Chat Sports. Next up on the show, Stefan Gilmore. Could he go from the Carolina Panthers to the San Francisco 49ers? A former 49er in Richard Sherman believes that Gilmore could be coming out west and going to the NFC West to either the Niners or the hated Seattle Seahawks. He said this on the Richard Sherman podcast. Stephon Gilmore has been fantastic over his entire career. I look forward to seeing what the market ends up with. I expect him to go to the West Coast, either Seattle or San Francisco, to scoop him up and for him to thrive. Now, Stephon Gilmore last year, after being traded away to the Panthers from the New England Patriots, was very, very good. Now, he wasn't quite the defensive player of the year type of player that he was back in 2019, but he was really, really good. Completion percentage, quarterbacks only completed 43% of their passes, yards per target, 4.1, two pass breakups, and he only gave up one touchdown in coverage as well. And the 49ers secondary was solid last year, led by Ambry Thomas, K1 Williams, Emmanuel Mosley. I like the safety tandem right now and Jimmy Ward and Jaquaski Tart, the latter of which set to be a free agent, you can get away with those types of corners on your roster. But let's just say that Stephon Gilmore is willing to take around $10 million per year. That, in my opinion, is a discount. 
I'd really think long and hard about bringing him to the bay because that then slides everybody else to a more natural and comfortable position for them. It doesn't put as much pressure on those players and it allows Stephon Gilmore to really be that top flight cornerback one-on-one -on -one coverage if you want to play man. He can also thrive in the zone as well. So let's hope it's not to the Seattle Seahawks. And if it's for an affordable price, I'm all for Stephon Gilmore coming to the Bay. What do you say, though? Be the GM. Be John Lynch. You're in the shoes of JL, and you're not going to Amazon, not putting on the headset like me. Do you want the 49ers to sign Gilmore? S for sign, P for pass. Once again, you be the GM. Get those votes in. And thanks so much for watching today's show.